So you're a guru now. I can live with that, Mark. <laughs> yeah, OK. <laughs> uh, I mean, these are pretty eye-watering figures, aren't they? And, and for stuff that really um, helps us to get by day by day. I've often said here on GB News, Mark, that the headline rate of inflation, which is 10.1% yeah. at the moment, obviously a 40-year high, it seriously understates the real rate of inflation for lots of particularly struggling households because those on lower incomes pay a higher share of their income or benefits or whatever it is they use to get by on staples. And it's not just fuel, petrol and diesel, which for many people is not a luxury. It's a necessity to go to work, to get around, particularly in rural areas, but also for food as well. And these high food prices that we've seen in the aftermath of lockdown, of course, they've been made a lot worse by war in Ukraine, mm. given that Russia and Ukraine, between them, their exports can't get out via the Black Sea. And between them, they create an awful amount of the world's wheat and barley and a whole lot of other cereals. Staples. Yeah, yeah. But what's actually firing a, a lot of, of this recent over this past month or so? Because we've seen the fuel costs at the pump, diesel and petrol go back up. Is that adding to the pressures on uh, supermarket and, and, and corner shop prices? It is. Um, we thought food prices, food price inflation would ease a little yeah. bit. Uh, because there was a decent crop in other parts of the world. France is a big grain producer, the US, Canada, yeah. uh, and, and so on. But we've had in, in recent weeks a breakdown of the deal between Russia and Ukraine and the UN to allow grain to escape, and it literally is escaped yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, through, the, the through the Black Sea. Through, yeah. That deal, actually, is there are now signs that, that deal's coming back together, but that isn't including it included in this numbers. And there are quite a few numbers here, Mark, so let me just talk you through them. I've done an on-the-money graphic here. Okay. We can see here a graph, and this graph shows... These are British retail consortium graphs. This goes all the way back wow. to just before 2000. You can see peaks here, and you see a peak there in, uh, off, in, in the early part of this century, 2000, 2001. Food prices peaked there. They went up by about 6% uh, in a year. Then we saw, after the financial crisis in 2008, we saw food price inflation up near 12, 13, 14 percent um, year on year. And then they came down. But you see in the right hand side of the graph there shooting up, shooting up there. And this is now food price inflation of 13.3 percent. So food is 13.3 percent more expensive in October, says the British Retail Consortium, than it was in October last year. And if we break down that number, Mark, within that number, let's Let's go on to the next graphics now. I've got some fine print from the uh, Office for National Statistics. I think we can see those graphics. But before they come up, let me just tell you, vegetable oil, which is a, a real staple that people use, you know, if you run a chip shop or a restaurant, a lot of families use a lot Cook of vegetable oil. Cook your bacon oil. and eggs, yeah. We can see the numbers here. In September 2021, Mark, a litre of vegetable oil was £1.56. That same bottle of vegetable oil is now £2.58, right? 65% up. That is absolutely the war between Russia and Ukraine right. right there that's put up the price. It's made from sunflowers and, and, and all kinds Vegetable of other, oils, yeah. all other kinds of oils. And I've got some others that you may be interested in. Pasta, yep. another staple that's often used by poorer families. It's very, you know, very filling. Dur Durham wheat. Very yeah. cheap. 38p for a half kilo bag in September 2021. September 2022, the same bag of pasta, 61p. That's a 60% rise. Tea as well. The price of tea has gone up enormously from September 2021 when it was 67 pence, says the Office for National Statistics, for 125 grams of tea. It's now almost a pound, 97 pence, a 45 percent increase. And finally, another probably the most important staple that you can get apart from bread is milk, of course. Milk was one pound 17 for four pints in September 2021 because dairy farmers, they have to you know, feed stock. They have electricity costs. Fertilizer's all, gone up. Fertilizers, yeah, yeah. all the rest of it. That's pint, same four pint bottle of milk is now one pound fifty two right. mark, a thirty percent rise. Should we just try and cheer people up a little sure. bit with one good bit of news, and that is that wholesale gas prices come down again. I think I'm right in saying. Absolutely. Now this is this is the really big one, and yeah. we're talking about this most days, yeah, yeah. right? And it's absolutely right that we do. We hear an awful lot about how tight the public finances are, and they are tight. And we've, you know, just in six weeks, the Tories have gone from promising low taxes to now they're warning of high taxes. For, for 10 years that, to come. That's yes. what we were talking about yesterday. Yeah. But within that overall fiscal picture, I said that big warning of high taxes in the 
autumn statement in a fortnight's time could be a bit of a softening up exercise. Yeah, it yeah. might not be as bad as they're saying. A bit of kidology. Uh, ab- absolutely. Because within the fiscal accounts, there are two chinks of light. The first chink of light is that government borrowing costs are coming down. They were 4.5% a year uh, before um, Rishi Sunak was yeah, crowned yeah. prime minister, when they looked as if there'd still be an extended Tory leadership scrap. They're now more like 3.5%. That potentially takes billions of pounds a year off the government's borrowing costs, yeah. the interest they pay on their debt. And the second thing, Mark, you've rightly put your finger on it, the price of wholesale gas. 350 euros on international markets per megawatt hour for gas back in August. Now around 120, touched 100 last week, and you've now got investment banks and others saying we could go back below 100. Why? Because most of the European Union, their gas storage is full. Right. And so far, it's a mild winter. If that gas price stays tame... Delivering that energy price cap between now and April will be much, much cheaper for the government. Not yeah. We were talking hundreds of billions, right? It could end up costing the government single-digit billions. Right. We have to see. But if that gas price stays low, a lot more scope, a lot more room for manoeuvre in the fiscal accounts, fewer tax rises and fewer spending cuts. Bit of light at the end of the tunnel. Let's just hope Jack Frost stays away a bit longer. Indeed. 